I'll get things kicked off. Um, panel, thank you very much for coming together tonight to put this public meeting presentation together on the NEPA phase of the project. For our viewing audience, we very much appreciate everyone taking time from their busy schedules to dial in and participate in the public meeting for the Harvey Park Greenway project. Uh, this is the initial phase one of the project. We're really excited about the progress that we're making on uh, the project so far. Um, this is a very important piece of that process to make sure that we're engaging the public throughout uh, the design and ultimately the construction of this greenway. Uh, we have with us tonight uh, CT consultants who will be introduced in just a second. Also, we've got uh, Casey Williams, uh, who's sitting in the sideline right now observing. She's our new park director. And I think Missy Stahl is also dialed in as, as one of the audience members, uh, just make sure that we're working okay on that side of things. Uh, but my name is Chuck Downham. I'm the Assistant City Administrator for the City of Spring Hill. And again, we're very, very pleased to have everybody with us tonight. Uh, we will be kicking off with a brief presentation. There'll be some question and answer, and then the CT Consult team will kind of walk you through some instructions on how you can participate in an online survey that we also have. So James Goliath, who's a senior project manager and uh, our primary point of contact uh, for the project, along with Sean Riggs and, and Matthew, uh, will let James, let you introduce your team and then we'll get started with our presentation. Thank you. Very good. Thanks, Chuck. Um, as Chuck mentioned, I'm James Glyas with CT Consultants. Um, I'm the senior engineer on the project, also a resident of Spring Hill. Um, and we also have on the phone today, um, or the video, the video virtual meeting, Sean Riggs, who's the project manager, uh, Matthew Piper, who is the design lead, and Jim Duncan from uh, Terracon, who's taking the lead on the, the NEPA portion uh, of the project. Um, so you wanna go, there? yep, perfect. Uh, just a, a brief overview uh, for tonight's meeting. I just wanted to, to, to show you what to expect. You know, we're gonna do a quick project overview of where we are with the project, a little bit about the design concept, uh, go over the project schedule where we are at this point, and there's gonna be multiple opportunities to um, ask questions. And just a little bit of housekeeping. Um, this is, uh, the, the we're using, it's called Ring Central, which is a, a feature through Zoom meetings. So whether you're familiar with it or not, um, there should be on the bottom of your screen, uh, a little toolbar, and there is a little chat button there. Um, so at any time during the presentation, uh, feel free to type right in there. And if you type uh, a message to everyone, we will monitor, Matthew's actually gonna be monitoring it throughout the presentation. And um, if it's something we need to jump right in, we can answer it. And, and there are some scheduled breaks through this presentation. Uh, we'd be more than happy to um, answer any of those questions. And, and, and there's, there'll be time at the end of the presentation and there'll be time for the next month after that even. So we just wanna make sure that you have ample time so if you uh, just want to take this all in right now that's fine or if you want to be a little bit more interactive um, it's, at, it's at your will um, again real quick project team here um, we, we have the, the, the pleasure of working with the city of spring hill ct consultants ourselves terracon um, is uh, taking the lead on the the nepa portion of the project and just for those who are a little unfamiliar nepa is the environmental portion of, of a project. So typically what, what occurs, um, the, one of the first steps in the project is uh, when, we go, when we go through the project, just to, to check out uh, some of the histories of the environmental, and we're working with TDOT just to make sure that we're not having any adverse effects to the environment. So just a brief history, um, if some of you may or may not be aware, uh, City of Spring Hill, they do have a, um, a bicycle and greenway plan, which was uh, adopted back in 2015 and recently updated uh, in 2018 um, by Volker. Um, and this is um, basically what, what's included in this is a, one of the master plans, one of the tools the city has uh, as a plan for the city for greenways throughout the, the throughout the city. And this particular project, which is the Harvey Park Greenway phase one, this is one of the components in this document. So it actually was, uh, it is listed in there. It's one of the priority projects, if you will, for the greenways. 
Um, so that, that's, we just want to give you a little bit of an idea of how this particular project was chosen because there's, there's a lot of green waste throughout the city. And actually the next slide here, um, it's, and I know it's a little hard to read and um, this, this presentation is also going to, is posted on the website, so uh, the city's website, so you'll be able to download it, view it, zoom in. But this is basically just a, a, a large overview of the uh, entire city. And what, what we're just trying to show here is, um, by the legend, there are some current existing greenways. Uh, there's some proposed greenways, and there are proposed multi-use trails. And we're just trying to show that, you know, the city has a, a master plan to make sure that the entire city and both county sides are going to have some type of connectivity over the future. And um, this is one of the areas, and you can see it's kind of highlighted there in the uh, orangish tangerine color a little bit of where this project is. Um, and if we go to the next slide, it just zooms in a little bit of where we are. So the, so the area in red is the Harvey Park project. Um, it's, uh, if, if you are familiar with it, it it's behind the Lowe's uh, on Main Street and, 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 the, um, and, and Walmart. And we just wanted to show you that although this project, which is shown in red, which is the Harvey Park Phase 1, um, you can see that, that we're doing some connectivity here. But you can see even some of these paths in yellow here also, which are future phases. So this is really one of the first steps um, for this area to, to get the greenway prod, greenways really established in this portion of the city and to build upon it in the future. So the project itself, um, you know, the purpose of the trail is to provide connectivity between Harvey Park and the residential and commercial districts along McCutcheon Creek. So the path that we're working on now, um, it is, uh, this is the phase one construction. It is 1.3 miles, a shared use path, and it goes from Miles Johnson Parkway to Wilkes Lane. So Miles Johnson, that's where Harvey Park is, and then it goes all the way over to Wilkes Lane. Um, to connect into the subdivision over there. Um, the project does include uh, some, some, some uh, pedestrian bridges, some elevated walkways. There's going to be some amenities such as benches, picnic tables, and trash receptacles. The thing that I really want to highlight at this point is that the whole purpose of this meeting really is to, to start to communicate with the city um, of, you know, and the residents what the intent of the project is, uh, some of the ideas of the concepts of, of the thoughts so we can start establishing what is and isn't included in the project and, and the limits. So this, this is the very first stage uh, of, of the project and we'll be going through for the next year or so of going through different steps in the design. So what we're going to review today it, are the initial thoughts and, and we're looking for some feedback on there. And, it, and once we get feedback from TDOT and go through the environmental stages and the right-of-way process and the design process, there's going to be some iterations and it, it could be changing. But, but based upon the research we've done right now and, and the planning, what we're going to present to you today is, is our initial thoughts of, of what we're thinking with this project. And uh, just like a lot of communities, and I, and I know in Spring Hill, um, there's, there's money is always, is always a, a hot topic. You know, where, where, where's the money coming to pay for this project? The good news is um, the city has acquired two fairly large federal grants to pay for a substantial amount of this project. Um, so back in 2018, the city was awarded almost $600,000 in federal funding to pay for the engineering and right-of-way services the right away acquisition. So this pays for a lot of the professional fees, um, pays for um, just like it says, the, the engineering going through the, uh, the review process with TDOT. Um, so again, this grant that the, that the city secured, it pays 80% and they have to put in a 20% match. Um, and then the city has, once they, once they did secure that grant, the city was authorized to proceed with the first step, which is a NEPA, which is the environmental stage. And then last year, um, we actually assisted the city with getting another grant to actually pay for part of the construction. And it actually pays for 80% of the construction. So the city was awarded almost $1.2 million in another grant 
um, which, which is an 80-20 grant. So that means 80% is given by the feds and 20% is local dollars. So I think it's important to see that, you know, this project, you know, about $600,000 for right of way and professional fees, 1.2 million almost for construction. That's 1.8, that's almost $2 million of federal dollars that's going to pay for this project. What a fuck waste of our money. What's this? No, I'm sorry. Um, so I, I just thought it was important just to, although there, there is still a substantial uh, commitment by the city for the 20%, um, I, I think, you know, it, it goes a long way too to show that, you know, almost $2 million is coming from, from uh, the federal government. And at this point, I'm going to let uh, Sean, the project manager, take over and talk a little bit about the conceptual alignment. Yes, so I realize this, this map is probably hard to see on, on the slide, but uh, a PDF of the, uh, the alignment can be downloaded from the city project website. Um, but do want to mention that the, the project begins at Harvey Park at Miles Johnson Parkway to the south and it generally follows the existing sanitary sewer easement along the Cutchin Creek and it traverses behind Lowe's and Walmart then um, along the western side of uh, Campbell Station Parkway ending at, at Wilkes Lane and Tanyard Springs Drive. So this next slide will a little closer look at the uh, beginning about third of the, uh, the proposed alignment. So the we have a um, trail crossing um, Miles Johnson Parkway. Um, it's going to be an at grade crossing and it's going to be located near the uh, culvert. Um, this area provides good sight distance um, and uh, some opportunities um, for an, an enhanced crosswalk, which it could be a pedestrian signal, high visibility pavement markings, uh, you know, decorative materials. Um, and at this location, because there's some, uh, some relatively gentle grades in the area, especially at the, the culvert uh, behind the head walls, there's a little bit extra room. Um, we may also look at providing a trailhead and doing other aesthetic improvements to the head wall. Um, then the, the alignment generally, for the most part, it follows the existing sanitary sewer easement. Um, there's, you know, on the east side of the, on the McCutcheon Creek, um, but at locations like at Miles Johnson Parkway, you may notice that, that deep that dip here, let's see, this area. Um, that's because the grades in that area do not make it as easily as accessible if you follow the, the uh, uh, sewer easement. So this helps with generally, um, you know, trying to follow existing grades and, and while maintaining ADA compliance. Um, and it, you know, and it literally goes a long way in, in helping us minimize site disturbance and clearing and, and just reducing the footprint of the project as much as possible. So, like I said, it generally runs along and follows the existing sewer easement. Then it starts coming back away, diverging from the sewer easement again as we get closer. Let me see the next slide. Start uh, getting close to uh, the next roadway crossing at Belshire Way. Um, again, that's more for ADA compliance. Um, there's going to be another enhanced crossing here located just a uh, little bit, I guess, to the um, um, the west or, yes, I guess the west side of the median on Belshire Way. Then again, it sort of goes back down, follows the existing sewer easement, e easement behind Lowe's. And then on the west side of the uh, of the uh, uh, Lowe's retention pond. And I know it's hard to sell, but there's a, this is an area where it's a known wetland or, or just low lying area. We're looking to do a, a raised boardwalk section in this area to minimize our impacts. Then we also have behind this, this is sort of a, and if you may recall in that one slide where we had the red trail and the yellow trails coming off for a future segment, this is a location where that future trail segment 
would connect to. So there could be a trailhead in this area here. And there's a development that we're in close coordination with now that is going to be constructing this part of the trail, this sort of hatched green area and part of their development. So it's not going to be included in construction of this, but it's going to be in place. It's going to be completed at the same time or prior to the rest of the Harvey Park Greenway. So it would all be one contiguous trail system. Um, then these, this blue alignment you see here is um, another option to connect to the, uh, to the uh, trail, that portion that's gonna be constructed by the de development. So we just wanted to provide that for, for everyone's consideration as, as another option. Um, similarly, we got on going on to the next slide, you'll see behind Walmart, um, right now the, the trails begins to cross it could cross the, a creek here and there'll be another a bridge or a culvert that may be required um, or it can remain on the west side of the, the creek and, and you may not need one or at least you can probably limit eliminate one structure let's see here again so you have an alternative alignment that runs on the west side that, that is it's basically in, in really accommodating grade area. There, there's not much out there behind um, on the other side of the creek. Um, the alignment, the other, the main alignment, the green line uh, runs on the east side of the creek. And I don't, you, know, you may be familiar with Walmart behind it. It's a pretty steep embankment. So we'll be running along the side of the embankment where every couple areas of retaining walls may be required to, to put this trail in here. Um, then we go eventually traversing along the uh, property line of the uh, storage facility, crossing over their driveway, then running along the west side of Campbell Station Parkway. Um, then we'll end at Wolf Lane and we're going to do some intersection improvements here to allow access uh, on the Tanyard Springs to provide bike and pedestrian access into the sub. I know I went through that pretty quickly, but is there any comments or questions so far? Let's see, I haven't seen anything. It doesn't look like, it doesn't look like anyone's uh, putting in any comments, but several people look to have um, signed in on phones or iPads, so it might be a little bit more difficult for them to uh, type in their questions. Okay, and we'll give it a shot. If anybody has a question, feel free to mute yourselves and, um, you know, speak up and, and we'll, uh, we'll do the best we can. At this time, it doesn't look like anyone's unmuting themselves or coming up with any additional questions here, Sean. Okay. And this, while they may be thinking about formulating a question here, you know, ask yourself, how would you use the Greenway? Um, and, and what amenities are most important to you to see on the Greenway? And, um, you know, because we want to design and build this for you guys. I mean, it, it's, it's your trail. Um, so, you know, uh, any input will be greatly appreciated. And which alignment do you prefer? Do you like the green one? Do you like the blue one in some areas? All these questions and, and several others are on the, the survey. Uh, it's an online survey monkey. Um, so please visit that. Let us know what your thoughts are. Um, and, and that comment period is going to be open to October 31st. So even if you can't think of it, today, tomorrow, or even next week, you got some time. So, and, and share this with your, your neighbors, your family, whoever, um, and get them involved. Um, project schedule, we're, we're at public meeting. Um, we're looking to get the final NEPO report out very soon in November. 
and anticipation that we're going to have environmental approval end of this year, early part of next year. Um, and as James mentioned, you know, this is not the only time we'll, we'll go to have a public meeting. We look to have one again sometime in the spring. Um, that'll be after receiving all the feedback from, from this round of, of uh, public meetings. Um, we'll be able to, to incorporate whatever comments and feedback we get from that. And again, have more detailed plans to present you guys and, and start really working through some of the, the details um, in terms of design with everyone. Um, then after the meeting, we're looking to begin right away acquisition sometime fall of next year. And, and depending on, on how long that takes, looking to go to construction in, in summer of 2023. So there's a little bit of a, a gap in here um, before we go to construction, but hopefully it won't be that, that long. Um, so begin construction in the fall of 2023 and, and complete it by uh, 20, spring of 2025. Sean, can you go back to that schedule just, just for one minute? Yeah. Well, you know, one, one thing that I just wanted to point out also is some of these dates here, just so everyone's aware of, um, when the city did acquire some of the grants, there are certain deadlines that need to be, to be hit um, that, that come with, with the grant funding. So one thing that Sean, as he was going through this, this um, schedule, you know, these dates coordinate with the requirements um, by TDOT and the funding source. So really these are almost, and it says on or held by these dates. So if when we're going through the design and the environmental and even the right of way, if things progress um, quicker, then this, the schedule gets pushed up uh, a little bit quicker. And, and, and the good thing to remember is a lot of this money is federal funding. So the funding, the funding is there, it's, it's secured. And, um, and Chuck, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe BOMA um, has authorized the, um, the match. And that was one of the requirements to secure the grants. So that money, I believe, is also secured for that too. Yes, it's all been set aside in the city's budget process, and we'll carry that funding forward from one fiscal year to the next as the project progresses all the way to, to completion. It's interesting, James, you, in terms of the focus on the schedule, one of the things that's probably important to note also is that as part of the fact that we've got kind of a combination of federal and local funds involved, there are certain processes that we have to go through, and all of them have very stringent timelines that have to be followed. Right away acquisition, for example, there's a whole process that the city and the consultant team has to go through, notices and, and timelines and so forth. So you sit back and you look at this and you think, wow, you know, there's an awful lot of time that between the beginning of the right of way process and the construction advertisement. Well, a lot of that's driven by the fact that there's certain milestones and steps and procedures that we have to follow through the acquisition process. And so a lot of that takes a good bit of time to, to basically carry through that process. So uh, a lot of this is driven by you know, state and federal standards and uh, we have to follow all of that to, to the letter in order to make sure that the funding continues to through the project. That's a really good point, Chuck. I'm, I'm glad you pointed that out. Um, sometimes I think us as, as, as consultants, we, we just take this for granted, but, but uh, um, you know, as we're going through this process, it, it seems like, you know, we're, we're continually, you know, the, 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 the state, I heard, I just heard the other day, and I, I think I heard this number right with, with TDOT, because they're very involved with this project, or, and will be with review. I think I heard that about 50% of their staff is been with TDOT less than five years. Um, there's just been a tremendous amount of, of um, you know, turnover, and, and, and with people retiring and, and new hires, so that them themselves, you know, going through, not only do we have our certain requirements with them, they have certain requirements they have for the federal government too. So um, like I said, everyone's just doing their due diligence and dotting the I's and crossing the T's and, and making sure that, uh, that money is, is stays and, and, and we, don't, uh, we don't step out of bounds. Thanks, Sean. Yeah, thanks guys. And again, just, just to remind everyone of the public survey and, and how important it is to, to us to 
hear your get your feedback and, and address those comments. Um, the we have a project website, the the presentation, the survey, um, um, the road, the conceptual alignment PDF. That's all posted on there. The survey monkey link is, is available. Um, and, that, and that's going to remain open to October 31st. So please share with everyone and, and get, let us know what you think. Um, and another way to get to the, the project website is if you go to the springhilltennessee.org, right on the home page, there's a little scrolling news bar and, and you can click on the link right there. So I know this was taken this morning. Um, I believe it's number one this evening. So it, it changes, so you may have to look for it, but that's another way to get to the project website if you need. And um, we're gonna open it back up to questions or comments. Uh, it seemed like a quiet bunch. Get, oh, sorry, go ahead. I thought someone might've been uh, trying to ask a question uh, there. Um, it doesn't look like we're getting any uh, typed in questions at this point. Um, Looks like everyone's still basically muted. Maybe we can turn it over to some variable questions. Maybe someone would have something to toss in. Yeah. I'd, um, well, I hope we covered everything. Um, you know, got plenty of time to, to think of any questions and, and let us know. So um, if, if you can't do it now, that, that's, that's fine. This is not your only shot. But we'll. Yeah, I'd like to take a second and recognize Alderman Kanapari, who's a participant in our audience this evening. I don't know if Alderman Kanapari has any questions or comments, but certainly want to recognize and thank him for taking time to attend our public meeting this evening. As always, if he has questions, feel free to reach out to staff and we'll part to get back to you with a, with a response if you've got a constituent or if you've got a question in particular. Just looking forward to uh, getting this started, the construction started. Definitely we need uh, more green space and uh, greenways. This, this is going to be um, a great project for uh, people wanting to get from one place to another or just enjoy our, uh, our green space along the back of uh, Main Street. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's, there were several of us that participated in a, in a recent field trip out along the Greenway corridor and there's some amazing uh, just vegetation and all sorts of natural scapes all through there. Just a variety of wetlands and little water spots and, you know, just in incredible views and uh, be some great places for people to recreate and just enjoy family time and all that. So we're, we're real excited to see this. Yeah, we, we may need, we may need to think of some more um, parking spaces and uh, trailheads, but, um, Definitely uh, something that Spring Hill needs. And uh, like I said, can't wait for it to get going. Okay, we appreciate you joining us this evening. Do you have any other questions or comments from the folks that are attending tonight? You're welcome to unmute and ask a question or provide a comment if you'd like before we wrap up. Hello everyone, Casey Williams here. While others may be gathering their thoughts for additional questions and comments, I do want to say um, in appreciation with our aldermen that have been present, um, I, I am incredibly honored to be a part of this project. Um, this is an incredible team that the city has put together, led by my predecessor, Kevin Fisher, and our city administrator, uh, Victor Lay, our assistant city administrator, Chuck Downham, who is always a champion for all of our projects that we have going on. An incredible project manager that we have on staff, Missy Stahl, um, 
there's no one better suited to head up this project and keep us all on the straight and narrow. Uh, she's meticulous in, in her processes. But the team that you see before you with CP Consultants and others um, have really dedicated a lot of time, a lot of thought. This is not uh, just them looking at aerial images and plotting out courses. It's literally been boots on the ground, ticks, chiggers, all of it, <laughs> all rolled in together, um, uh, walking, taking some, some ATVs out and, and really experiencing the course. Um, I'm, I'm excited about it. This will be one of the longest uh, connections that we have for an alternative route north to south uh, to be able to transverse the city through other methods besides a vehicle. So it's really a beautiful pathway, even in its rough state that it's, that it's in right now, once we're able to actually walk through it, it's really um, tranquil and beautiful. Um, even though you have you know, some commercial development on one side and, and some residential on the other, you still feel like you are just in this just oasis of, of beautiful that you wouldn't expect inside of a city limits. So we're blessed to have it. It is truly the epitome of all things that are Tennessee, trees and greenery and hills and, and, and just beautiful landscape. And it's really a blessing to be able to have this team on it, but also to have received the funding that we've received. I'm not sure that outside of, of the grants that we've been awarded that this team has put together, that we'd be able to do this, uh, this length of a project and as all encompassing as it is, if it weren't for getting these federal funds. And I'm very, very grateful for our leadership, our elected officials who have, who have pledged the, the match. That would have been just a non-starter from the beginning if they were not willing to invest in this project. So I'm very, very grateful. Um, please share the links that you've seen on your social media for, for the survey and for any other means of input. We really want to know what the public thinks about it, how they feel about it, the, the courses, the direction, all of that as we go forward. And outside of that, you can always email any of us if you have any questions um, and, and we'll help you in any way that we can. Uh, we're here to help. We're here to provide amenity for the citizens and their families to have um, opportunities outside of the home to be together and to, to get from A to B or just to enjoy some, some time together within our city without having to travel somewhere else to do it. So it's really an incredible project and I'm really excited about it. It's funny because we look at the, the schedule and we think, gosh, 2025, that's like light years from now, but it, it's really not. Um, it took us, what, 12 years, I think it was, Chuck and Missy, to get duplex finished. And when you say that, you go, gosh, that was forever. But for those of us that have been around, it, it seems like it was just a blink of an eye, just a moment. So um, while it seems like it's a long, a long time coming, it'll be here quicker than you know it. So the more information that we get from all of you as we move forward, the better off we will be in providing exactly what you need so and want. So we're excited about it. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you to everyone who's worked so hard on it. And I look forward to working with you on it further. And for all of our citizens, please do not hesitate to reach out to us. Even if you don't know where to call, just call City Hall. They'll tell you where to, where to get to, and we'll be happy to, to answer any questions that we can. Thank you again for all of your time and for being here. We actually do have one question that came in uh, asking about what type of surface is planned for the Greenway. Um, and I can actually answer that one. Um, it's largely going to be an asphalt path for certain sections of concrete. And additionally, as uh, Sean had pointed out earlier in the presentation, there are also going to be portions of raised wooden path to uh, get away from more, some more sensitive areas and to add some variety, along with uh, a few uh, structures to cross the streams and things like that. Any other additional questions? One of the interesting sides as you look at this slide, you know, this is one of the views that you'll see as you're walking down the path of the Greenway, one of the more stunning kind of openings that you'll see. Uh, but anyway, just about every turn you've got you know, unique landscapes you know, mm -hmm. that you'd be enjoying. So uh, this will certainly rival a lot of our greenways around the Middle Tennessee area and will certainly be a, a nice attraction, not only for residents, but also 
visitors alike. So we're really excited about that. You know, on, on that point, Chuck, and I don't know if people can see my background, but my background, I'll move over. I know it's really small, probably on your screen, is actually also a picture, um, a photo that I took that's on the, the Greenway also, it's just a little overlook. So it, it, it is, it's, it's extremely scenic. Um, and, and just to touch upon what called on Matthew went with the question about the, the materials of the surface. No we have another one after that, so. Okay, great. And, and one thing I just wanted to point out, and I know um, Sean has mentioned it also, this path is going to be ADA compliant, and, it, and it's a multi-use path. So it is truly for bicyclists, it's for strollers, for, for just for, for people walking, um, people with disabilities. I mean, it, it, we, there are certain requirements and standards that we have to build to. Um, so it truly is going to try to make it an all-inclusive type of path. And, and as we all know, Main Street can get very busy, and there's not really a good pedestrian connector along Main Street. So this will really help with just getting to some of the, the, the retail development there or getting to some of the neighborhoods or, or even ultimately getting to the schools. So this truly will be, uh, I think, a, a really good example of what a multi-use path can be. Uh, our next question was from uh, Alan Hall, who was asking, what's the total linear distance and uh, what percentage of that distance has to be acquired? So the total distance is, it's about 1.3 miles. I think it was, it's a little over 7,000 feet roughly. Um, and it, as far as what, uh, what distance needs to be acquired, um, a, as Sean was mentioning, we're trying to vastly follow the existing uh, easements that the city has sanitary easements. Um, however, there, there's gonna be some areas we're going to be outside of those easement areas um, in order to meet current standard uh, ADA requirements. Um, and additionally, we, we're also looking at the, the use of this, uh, this trail in, in accordance with the use of those other easements too. So I, I believe we're actually crossing about a dozen and a half, two dozen parcels are actually crossed by this path. Um, I don't anticipate every single, any even, even from every single parcel, um, but, but there's going to be um, a, a decent amount of them um, that there will be some interaction once we get to, to that point. Uh, again, we've got another question. The questions are starting to come in now. Um, someone commented that um, some shaded spots would be great near the benches for people to stop and rest out of the sun if possible. Um, and I know, for example, some of the areas are in, you know, a pretty heavily wooded area that as long as it's not uh, exactly noon, there, there is a decent amount of shade in certain areas. And even this early in the, uh, in the game, too, you know, we've really been working with city staff to start thinking about some of the locations for where do we want to put some benches? Where do we want to put trash receptacles? What, you know, and, and not just where, where they go, but from a, from a standpoint of once, once this is uh, built and maintained, what, what makes sense from a maintenance standpoint and, and from a, an accessibility standpoint of the people using it. So um, we definitely appreciate a lot of these comments. And, and these are the type of items that we really appreciate that we can start incorporating into the design as we go to those next stages. Yeah, there, I would add that there's also some great little grass areas that'll be basically interspersed between wooded areas and the trails. So if somebody wants to take a break and just go sit in the grass for a while, there'll be plenty of places where people can recreate and, and just enjoy some time off the trail itself. Um, and then we've also, you know, obviously with the Harvey Park, we've got a, a great park at one of the ends, you know, there's a lot of activities and playgrounds and restrooms and other things. So. It's definitely set up really well for people to recreate, take a break, hydrate, do all the different things that they need to do, and also enjoy close proximity to our retail areas in case they want to grab a bite or do some shopping or whatever, just make it a, uh, a kind of a multi-use day, so all good. And it's also not um, a situation where once you get on the trail, you can't get off until the end. You, you come across many different areas where you can, you know, 
diverge from the trail and, and go do this or that. So I, I do want to make it clear that there's, there's going to be lots of different points of access to be able to get onto the trail and get off of the trail. Um, James made a great point earlier about access to the schools, whether it be the Heritage Campus um, on the far north end where you can get off of the trail and take a, a short jaunt over to the, the boardwalk that leads over to the, to the Heritage, that's existing, it's already there. But um, online, schools that are, that are gonna be coming online soon, we have one on, in the Planning Commission right now that's being considered on Wilkes Lane that a lot of the children who live in the surrounding neighborhoods might be able to walk to school instead of having to deal with car rider lines and, and all of that. Um, obviously healthier for them and their parents to be able to walk to school, but also release traffic on 31 uh, for, for a lot of those people who, who take that avenue as a way to and from school. It's a safe route as far as not having to walk right along Highway 31 if you wanted to get to school or to Walmart or to Marshalls or Aldi or anywhere else. Um, but you know, there's, it's, it's, a, it's a 12 foot wide pathway. So there's plenty of room for, for multiple methods of modality, whether it's walking or biking or, or if you're on a scooter or anything like that. Um, but also, there's there's some extra width on the sides to as one one sweet lady um said to me not too long ago she said is are there going to be critters jumping out at me no i mean we have we have mode areas on on either side that we'll maintain and keep clear um and clean so that you you don't feel encroached upon um so it, it'll be a really nice opportunity to be able to take whether you want a short walk or a long walk you know, if you wanted, literally, if you wanted to be able to get onto the trail at Wilkes Lane, you could walk all the way to Harden Park and never see any traffic or, or anything, you know, that, that would get in your way from enjoying that, that route. But if you wanted to take, like Chuck said, stop off and get some, something to eat at uh, Taco Express or, or wherever else along the way, it, it'll be a really great route. And as far as the shade is considered, um, the day that we that we walked it and and rode along it um it was pretty swarmy out <laughs> but we were we were in the shade quite a bit of the time there are some areas obviously that are open to the sunlight um but i was really pleased at, at the beautiful tree canopy and we're going to preserve as much as that as possible uh the sewer easements that are there have provided for that and keep those mowed and bush hogged and so the tree growth along the perimeter of it provides a nice canopy, but you still have plenty of room um, within them. So I really don't foresee a lot of change with that. There would be some sections that we have to deviate, obviously, um, but it'll really be a beautiful walk. And, and, and I think a lot of people, once they get on it, will really be fun. Going on it just on vehicles on foot. I mean, I was James. You said you did it in the winter. What was it a year or two ago? And and you were. It took you what four hours or something just on foot, just trying to figure it out. Took what a while. Yeah, yeah, it didn't take us obviously near that long, but we refined that quite a bit. So it's not it, one point three miles. You know, to those of us who would have to be chased by someone with a bloody knife to run for any reason. Um, it, it's, it's really not that long of a pathway and it'll be really nice to be able to get from one end of the city to the other, um, rather quickly comparatively to other alternative methods. Well, it doesn't look like we have any other uh, additional questions. I'd say if there's no other questions, then we'll work to wrap thing up. Uh, I also want to take a second to thank Lori Luzinski, who's also on. She's our communication coordinator. Uh, she's all things magic behind the scene in terms of our uh, city website and our Facebook page and just you know, all the different types of media and notices and public announcements. And, uh, she, she certainly does a lot of magic in terms of just creating great graphics and everything else for us to work from. So special thanks to Lori for being behind the scenes tonight and you know, helping with all of this. Um, James, CT consultant team. Uh, Jim Duncan, I see you're in there, uh, but very much appreciate everybody's attendance tonight as far as our consultant team and our city staff. Uh, as Casey indicated, if anybody has any questions regarding the project, uh, feel free to reach out to any of our city staff. You're welcome to reach out to my office. I'm up at City Hall. Casey's over at the Recreation Department, uh, but we're always there to help everybody if you've got questions and uh, 
again, I encourage everybody to please get online, look at the survey, share it with your friends, neighbors, family members. Uh, the more input we get, you know, the better this whole project will be. So we encourage everybody to take time to provide input. And again, we very much appreciate everybody coming out and participating in this public meeting this evening. So we may have a couple more chats. We got anybody else that had a question before we wrap up? All right. Well, I think that does it. James, thank you very much again. We'll call it a night. Thank you, everyone. Really appreciate it. Appreciate uh, staff and, and the group of workers we have here and appreciate it really like the questions and can encourage you guys enough. Just please send, send your questions, comments, whatever you have, and um, we'll really do our best to incorporate them in, in as best we can into the project. So thank you very much. Great. Thank you much, everyone.